This radio is what convinced me to get my amateur radio license. So as we unbox it, I'm going to do a little bit of rambling about it. Let's jump into it. Welcome to Radio Tech by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I'm going to do a bit of unboxing and rambling of the BFF8HP. Now, this isn't your typical unboxing, so if you're new to the channel, uh, typically what I do is in the unboxing is I more so than talk about what's in the box is I ramble as I take stuff out of the box to show you what's in there, to tell you what I think about it, why I bought it, why you might want to buy it, why you might not want to buy it, and all that cool stuff. So let's jump into this. As I've already mentioned, this is the Bofang BF F8 HP. Now, a lot of unboxing, a lot of reviews of this, but again, as I announced at the onset, this is one of the main reasons I've gotten into amateur radio and why you might want to also. So this was super cheap. I think this was like about 68 bucks uh, on Amazon, something like that. You know, it's a dual bander, so VHF, uh, UHF, type stuff it's eight watts so not the standard five watts and i know the extra three watts isn't a huge difference for those who can hit me up in the comments below and try to educate me about it i get it but one of the other things i'm from detroit michigan and hey there's no replacement for displacement so watts are watts so you know if you got more watts it's better than having less watts in most cases so anyways but the perspective is this offered me an, a very economical entry into trying amateur radio and, and i think that's one of the big things now this is my personal opinion as it relates to amateur radio i've been wanting to get into amateur radio for over 40 years and i've procrastinated 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 but i finally gave in and did it when i saw this because you know it wasn't having to go to the wife and say hey i got to spend 500 i got to spend a thousand dollars on radios you know 68 dollars that's basically an impulse purchase these days so i actually ordered the radio before I even got my license as a reason to get my license. So I left it in the box, sitting on a shelf, looking at me as I studied for my license, went and took the test, passed, great guys at the license exam uh, at the uh, club out here, and now it's time to open the box. Now, the whole idea of this channel, and I'll get into it in a future video, is to explore radio technology in general with a bit of a focus on amateur radio itself. My primary interests are in the high frequencies, VHF, UHF, and above. I don't have a big interest in HF. If it's your thing, hey, great, I'm not knocking it. But I really want to look at some of the higher frequency modalities. And I'll talk about this in future episodes. I don't want to belabor it here. But let's go ahead and open this box. I've been waiting a long time to open it. So what do we have inside? Ooh, we have a rather big manual, multicolored. Uh, actually it doesn't look too bad. I'm sure it's going to be a mix of Chinese English is most of this stuff. And I want to talk about that in a minute, but I want to get this radio out. So again, the radio itself, you know, um, fairly compact. In the, you know, for a Chinese radio, it actually doesn't feel too bad. Now one of the things, this is the 21 100 milliamp year battery. So there's a lot of, was a lot of controversy in the um, uh, reviews on Amazon. Some people claim they got an 1800, some people claim they got a 2000, so this is the 21. In the documentation on Amazon, it actually in one place says 2100, in another place says 2000, but this is the 2100 battery. So it is a relatively good sized battery, and I'm assuming it just simply pops on like that, which it does. Some of the people were complaining about the battery the release, that if you reached around and grabbed it, that you could potentially pop it and uh, the battery would pop off. And uh, I don't see why that's possible because it actually takes quite a bit to push this and release the battery. But I'm sure, you know, hey, just about anything's possible. Now, this is a uh, takeoff of, what is it, the... Uh, UV5, etc. So the 8 is simply the pretty much the same form factor. Now it doesn't have the mine doesn't have the chrome faceplate. I'm not sure if there was an option, but um, it didn't appear to be. And I like the fact of just having the basic, you know, black finish. Um, again, call buttons, push to talk, all the typical stuff that you'd expect over here. Uh, does have the obligatory flashlight? I actually think that's kind of interesting in a way. I don't know. Maybe I'm strange. Uh, SMA connector on the top, and if we pull this out, uh, we come out with the uh, obligatory headset. Not sure I'll use this, but I may adapt the cable for different things. And also, uh, the cheap rubber ducky 
stock antenna which screws in here. Now one of the things I did buy an upgraded antenna to this. Also in full disclosure this probably will not be my main radio. I, I have another purpose for this and I'll share this with you in another video. But let's get through this for right now. So it does have the belt clip. Um, I won't use that. And it comes with a stand, a lanyard, which again won't be used, and a charger. So I, I like this idea, and you just pop this in to the stand, charge it, plug it in. Um, so again, it looks like a nice unit. Now again, I haven't fired this up, and I'll do some other stuff once I do fire it up and everything. But so far, I, I really like the looks. And again, I use this as my encouragement to get my technician's class license to overcome procrastination. You know, let's face it, the technician class license is 35 questions. They're not super hard questions. You could probably almost guess at the test and get 50% right because, you know, of it's multiple choice and there's basically four answers. You know, two are totally usually kind of way off base answers if you use logic. One's a distractor and one's the right answer. So you, you can do pretty good. I didn't really study a lot. Um, I read this uh, gentleman's manual, another Michigander, I believe, and went and took the test, and it was pretty easy. It was just really forcing the time to read it, take some practice exams, and actually go take the test. Um, and it was one of the other challenges I had is, is finding, uh, you know, a place to take the test. Uh, I guess a lot of it is now done through local clubs, things like that, rather than going to some FCC office as it used to be like way in the past when I looked into it. So it's much easier. You can go to the um, ARRL, I have to get some of these acronyms down, right? Website, put in your location, find the location of, you know, the next test or testing area and go take it. So, you know, hopefully this is some encouragement. Now, the other thing I want to touch on a little bit is um, I'm really glad to see and I was really encouraged um, by and I want to make sure I get these right now. If I get them wrong, I'll put them down below. Uh, basically ham concepts and, you know, ham radio crash course and, and all those guys out there that are really putting out really good content with regards to uh, ham radio, amateur radio, etc. Uh, it was really strong encouragement again for me to go out, take the test, um, you know, and also accept this equipment. I know that, you know, I, I read on the internet, you know, there's sort of this love hate relationship with Baofeng. And, you know, the one thing is in my day job, I spent a lot of, a lot of time in Shenzhen, China. Uh, you aren't going to beat the Chinese when it comes to electronics. So, uh, you know, whether you don't buy it or not, they're going to sell them in the world. It's going to come. So it, it's better to figure out how to work with it than try to fight it. At least that's been my professional experience. And so far what I've seen across the interweb as a whole, the Baofeng product for the price point you know, has not been a bad product and has been an evolving product. And I think that's one of the things folks miss a little bit about the Chinese product is it's typically an evolving product. So if you get a 1 0 like most things, it probably is not going to be the best. And, you know, this is, I think, uh, you know, based off again the UV5. And, uh, you know, now we're up to the, what is it, the FP8, so or F8HP. You know, so it's been had a couple revs to it or a good number of revs to it. It's been out and so it's it's sort of refining. Now, one of the other things I take a look at when I buy this stuff, I like to buy a lot of this stuff where possible from Amazon. They've got a great return policy. If stuff doesn't work, you can send it back. I also like looking at the reviews. And so this had very positive reviews. 70, 70, this, this had 73% of on the five star and 16% on the four star. So it actually had a pretty good overall rating. Um, you know, for this radio, so which made me comfortable. Again, I bought this for a specific purpose. You know, I will use this for repeater communication, etc. I like the idea. Again, it's got eight watts. I live a little bit out in farm country, so even though those extra three watts over five may not make a huge difference, I think they will make some difference for me. So, 
Anyways, I've rambled on a little bit about it, so you've, you've uh, understood my logic a little bit. And if you're thinking about getting your amateur ticket, I would highly recommend it because, again, one of the things on this channel that I'm going to focus on is the higher frequencies. I'm going to focus on DMR, DMR, digital mobile radio. I'm going to focus on satellite communication, and we're probably going to even do some uh, Earth, Moon, Earth stuff when, in the higher frequencies. So um, I want to kind of look at those type of things. Might throw on a little FT8 and a couple other pieces. Definitely going to be some uh, SDR radio in here. So not just all for the amateur. It's going to be a heavy focus on amateur, but I'm going to also hit some of the listening stuff too because I think uh, RF out there in this new day and age of the internet is still underrated. So hopefully you found it interesting. If you did, subscribe, hit the thumbs up, and we'll catch you guys in the next video. Cheers.